uh, YouTube. What is up, everyone? So here we go. We're talking about the greatness within. And Rick actually helped me with this one. Let me point this way. Rick actually helped me with this one. He talks about putting the reps in because I made a video on putting the reps in. And that's always resonated with me and my journey. And if it resonates with you, make sure you put your reps in on your journey. So today we're going to talk about the concept of the three C's. It's my first principle. And the three C's stand for clarity, confidence, and commitment. And now I know everyone is on their journey doing the best that they can. And sometimes we just need to hear the right story in the right way to get us to move forward on our journey. So that's what I want to do here today is share a personal story I've had with the three C's. And Rick and Steve will also share a story that they've had with the three C's as well. And so I'll never forget the first time I knew I was really out of shape. I've done a very good job of living as myself, as me, me being who I am. And so I always looked at the world through my lens, not other people's lens. lens. And with other people's lens, it was, you're fat. And they would tease me and they would make fun of me. But I didn't care, just didn't care. Not enough to make a change at least. But one day, I found myself looking in the mirror. And I saw myself looking in the mirror in a completely different way. And that was, I got to see my love handles. Because there was a mirror behind the mirror that I was at. We were at a hotel room. And so I'm looking at it. And that was the day I knew I needed to make a change. And sometimes that's where we're at. Sometimes we're not listening to what anybody else says or what anybody else thinks. I always say your opinion is more important than anyone else's opinion of you. And that's the way I've always lived my life. And that's, that's the way I've lived my journey. And, and that's why it hit me so intensely when I really got to see it. When I looked at it and said, man, I don't want to be this fat kid anymore. And so with not wanting to be fat anymore, I made a commitment that I wasn't going to be that anymore. And I, I, make a mental picture of seeing how I looked in the mirror. And I started adding more commitments. Now, fast forward, the power of six, I understand the lessons in a deeper way now. I didn't know what I was doing as I was going through this process, but it helped me forward, even though I didn't know the steps. And I hope this is going to help you forward as well. But the commitment piece is finding as many reasons why to why it is you're doing what you're doing. One was, I didn't like the way I looked anymore. I couldn't know I was going to feel as good as I was going to when I lost the weight. So that wasn't one at the time. It was really, I just didn't like that look. I didn't like the look and I wanted to change it. I didn't like the way the look made me feel as well. And so I knew it was up to me to change that and find a way to make it a reality. So total commitment, I said, I'm going to stay on this no matter how long it takes me to get to where I need to go. Then the next piece, confidence. Now, sometimes people misconstrue confidence and competence. To be competent in something means you know what you're doing. To be confident in something means you believe in you. And yeah, I believe that I could do it. I believe that it was something that I could could achieve. Um, right environment, you know. I had the right parents, the right upbringing, and I've had uh, other challenges in my life to help me through my confidence process. But I'll say this: when it comes to confidence, confidence is practice. The more you practice doing certain things, the more confident you become in your ability to know that you can get better at anything that you practice consistently. And so in the confidence piece, I knew as long as I kept practicing, I would eventually get to where I needed to go. I would need to adjust because I don't know what I don't know, but I knew I would get there some way, somehow. So I was committed and I was confident and the clarity was just there. The clarity was, I don't like what I'm seeing in the mirror anymore. I'm not liking that. 
and I'm going to change it. And so with those three pieces, putting it into place, it does start with a thought. But the thought has to have a feeling behind it. And when you have the thought and you have the feelings behind the thoughts, and I call it the why behind the why. Why are you doing what you're doing? Because usually other people's opinion isn't enough to make us make a true, true change. And deep down inside, I think everybody knows that. I think um, we try to fit in. Sometimes we try to fit in way too much. And what I've always done in my journey, specifically when I coach people, is I listen really, really closely to what is going on in between here. Because when I can figure out why their mind is playing the reality that it's playing, I can help mold them into the ways that they need to be molded into to take the actions that they need to take. So fast forward on what I was going through. Um, my process started off kind of quick. I gave up soda and I lost about 20 pounds right there. It's really the easiest 20 pounds I lost. Usually the beginning's the easiest because you have those feelings and the momentum on your side. If you just change a couple things, big shifts happen. But then it does start to slow down. And I still knew I wanted more. I wanted to see how far I could go. Because I actually lost the love handles by then, just <laughs> cutting out the soda. Who knew? But going a step further, I'm like, once I got started, I wanted more. I wanted to see how far I could take this. I started cleaning up everything I was doing from my nutrition, started exercise. I was already exercising regularly when I gave up the soda but I increased it a little bit more, changed things a little bit more. But I'll tell you, the industry is very good at branding to us. I actually had this conversation with Steve. And as a young kid, I thought like raisin brand, that can't be too bad, it's got raisins in it. Lo and behold, they're putting coated sugar on the raisins and the wheat is processed. but that's that's the beauty of branding see a brand wants you to buy their product no matter what and they do a very good job of making you think they're not doing so badly like hey we got your back we got fortified vitamins we got everything that you need we even got some omega sixes and omega threes but the truth is it's not always that simple and when you can really see what's good for you versus what's not so good for you, the game changes quite a bit. What helped me on my process was avoiding processed foods as much as possible. I cut out the crackers, I cut out the breads, I cut out starchy foods like potatoes, pastas, and I started eating as many clean living foods as I could. Now, during this part of my progression, I hadn't really gotten into grass fed yet, but I was eating meat product, right? I was amping the protein up quite a bit because I noticed not only was it great for my metabolism, it actually helped me stay full longer. I was keeping myself hydrated correctly and hydrated correctly doesn't mean eight ounces of water every two hours or whatever they say. Hydrated correctly is really just checking your pee, seeing, making sure that it's not completely clear, but making sure that it's not toxic yellow either. Just getting that balance in. And the other piece was fruits and vegetables. Stayed really consistent with that. And as I went through that process, I realized how much easier it could become. And I actually got really, really good at seeing when I could, when I could put some of that junk food back in, in the right way. And I also noticed Junk food actually helps you with your metabolism if it's done properly. And so sometimes people look at me and go like, How are, yeah, of course you're able to eat that way because you look the way that you do and that it's the reverse. See, people get it all wrong. I eat the way that I eat because it is planned eating. 
I plan for how I'm going to eat because my planned eating helps me look the way that I look. And it all started with having clarity, being committed to the process, and being confident in my ability to come through. So I hope this helps somebody move forward on their journey. And Rick, Steve, I'd love to hear your story. We're on a mission. We're going to get this whole thing figured out. Technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> They're not I difficulties. Rick. I love They're Rick. Not I love not, Rick's facial expressions. <laughs> and they're not and they're not difficulties. I mean, look at this. Look at the technology that we have here, right? I can put you right there in the top. It's pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, this is technology. And we are playing and life is play. And you have incredible clarity, confidence, and of course you're committed. I <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to put in the reps, coach. I'm trying I pay attention. I'm watching you and it, it inspires me to put in the reps. Uh so thank you. Yeah, well, thanks for playing. Coach Mock? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, mine uh, and I don't want to veer away from the 3 Cs, but um what I was thinking about has is very relevant to the 3 Cs and relevant to our conversation and what you just said about nutrition is is sometimes it's taking away the bad stuff that frees up your ability to be healthy, right? It's not mm -hmm. eating the junk food. It's, and then we were talking about working with athletes that, um, you know, we can make an athlete faster, jump higher, stronger in one training session by taking away the restrictions, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, as I'm looking through the clarity, the confidence and the commitment, I'm thinking, you know, I have those qualities I, and I've always felt that I've had the qualities, but what has held me back is my own brain. Um, I grew up where uh, in a kind of a very, I guess, a judgmental type environment as a kid. So if you made a mistake, you know, that's wrong. So you grow up where you can't make mistakes. You always have to make the right decision. Um, and so that inhibits you because in the in, in, in the future, in your adult life, you're questioning everything. Is this right? Is this right? Is this right? And the big lifestyle change or the big thing that clicked for me was really when I joined the military because that takes away all of your ability to think. You're doing what you're told, right? It, yeah. It's like I don't have to think. And the clarity, this is your job, confidence. Yeah, you've definitely got to be confident or they'll eat you alive. And then, of course, you're committed. You signed on the dotted line that, hey, I'm going to jump in front of bullets or do whatever I have to do. So all of those were there. And that was really a very productive time in my life. So when I got out, it, there was this contrast now because no longer did I have that. I guess you could just say it's an accountability. And so then you have to think for yourself and go, well, wait a minute. Why am I questioning myself all the time? Why do I have to be perfect or be right all of the time? Why is it not okay to make a mistake? And so once I eliminated that belief system, it totally freed up my ability to uh, create clarity, become more confident and to be committed. So for me, it was, it was really eliminating something um, from qualities that I already have. And I don't know that that's not true for a lot of people where those qualities are innate, but they're tampered down because of maybe some belief systems or, or experiences that they've had. And so then they start to question those things. So uh, I would just suggest that look at both ends, you know, see what, what you can eliminate that will free up the potential for those qualities and then use your methods and tactics as well to help nurture those. Did that make yeah. sense? Yeah. And I love it. And that's, that's why the power of six, it focuses directly on a principle, right? Because a principle, the principle has strategy and tactic behind it, and it goes even deeper to deeper levels because everyone's in different different positions of having the principle. So I, I love your thoughts and I love you sharing your piece and seeing how sometimes being overly structured and then going into a different world, it doesn't quite work the exact same. And so it's like, all right, let me let me realign into something that makes this work in the way that I know how how to make it work. Yeah, 
Yeah, and, and the one ingredient that makes the big difference is you have to be aware and you have to evaluate. You can't just float around um, and be a victim of your own belief systems. They say uh, flying flying from the seat of your pants. <laughs> hey, I, That's I, a very I, dangerous way to be. I have been, I've done a lot of that in my life. And, you know, and I watched the two of you and I, and we all have a little bit of different age brackets maybe, but um, of course, <sighs> your processes have created amazing lives without big giant dips, right? So you guys have been in this flow. This is what we call Pono, right? That's, and I've had different experiences in my life. I've had extremes. And so where I've been, you know, wealthy and poor, I've been sick and I've been, well, I, I've even experienced spontaneous healing. And so you don't know what you don't know. None of us do. And so uh, getting, going back to the three C's and getting really, really clear uh, on what you want to experience. Cause like Steve just said, you know, and, and Clifford just said, you don't want your thoughts, your willy nilly thoughts leading you. Look, you can direct the ship and this is, you don't have to have those pol polar experiences. And I, I can give you, you know, when we first touched on this and you asked me, I, there were several spots. Where did you get really clear in your confident, you're committed? I can tell you that nothing's ever happened in my life that I wasn't like good, fruitful, beautiful in my life that I wasn't clear. And I can point to the experiences and what I'm experiencing now in, in, look, I've been married 21 years. I have three adopted children. Uh, five years ago, a couple days here, five years ago, a couple days, five years, I haven't had a drink in five years. Holy crap. I can celebrate that, man. I talk about a commitment. Ah, oh, I was confident because I knew what I wanted to experience. I knew I wanted to have this wholeness back in my family. And I, dang, I almost wrecked it. I could have trashed it. I could have, I was almost there. I got to that place where there was, <clears throat> there was really nothing left of me, guys. I, I, what was left of my identity, if you'd have sneezed, it would be gone in the wind. And so I had to rebuild myself and recreate myself. And I, and Clifford, I, I point to you. I watch your steps. I watch the consistency of the action that you take to get in the direction, in the direction of what it is you want to experience. That's your process. Steve, that's your process. Steve, guys, we don't know what we don't know. And unless you have an inner circle that is inspiring you, that is like, who's in your circle that you're trying to keep up with? Who's in your inner circle that you're trying to keep up with? The, that they're, they're running, they're walking pace. Is your sprint all out? Who's that? Because I promise you, if you get inside that shirt and you pay attention, that'll be your pace. That'll be your pace. That'll be your life. It, it's an inside job. And you've got amazing people in front of you willing to, to just pour into you and see you as the highest ideal of you. See the best you. And that So clarity, confidence, commitment. I'm committed to... to Today, my purpose, I know very clearly who I am, what it is I want to experience in this world. And I, and I come from the deepest place in my heart. I, my purpose is to be the highest ideal of me and observation of the highest ideal of humanity. That means I got to show up that way every day. That means I, I got to do the hard work. I got to put in the reps, coach. And I'm paying, to the, paying attention to the ones that are putting in the reps because, well... Speaking
speaking to my heart and is carrying me through, even when I don't feel like I have it inside of me, I've got an inner circle that is inspiring me to go the direction that I want to experience. So I'm really clear on that. Did that answer your question, coach? Yeah, respect and love. And uh, I appreciate you putting your passion into what you put put it into and also having the the vulnerability to really explain your piece and i want to give you a huge congratulations five years that's very impressive bro i'm like yeah this my my yeah. daughter's 19th birthday mm -hmm. my daughter's 19th birthday here coming up yep january that's 19th awesome. oh my gosh I, it was i have deeper relationships i have wholeness inside of my family I have balance in my life and it's a, it's a beautiful thing. It's Pono. It's Pono, bro. That's, how, that's yeah. how the only way I can describe it. Yeah. And I, I want to bring a piece up with, with confidence because it's, it's such a strong thing. I was going back and forth between, do I call it confidence or do I call it certainty? And I finally just decided to stick with confidence because and explain it in a way of confidence isn't, isn't um, competence, two different things. Mm. And so when you were talking about like, this is what I do for people, like this is my world. When you go into a group of sprinters and that's like, or a group of it's their walking pace and to you it feels like it's sprinting, go into it. Like I'm the person who says, go into it if it's what you want. And that's where the commitment comes in. Are you committed? Yes, I am. Are you clear? Yes, I am. Go into it. And our minds are going to go haywire and say, I, I don't know. It's too hard. It's too much. I can't. Yeah, you fucking can't. Like, yeah, you can. And so I look to both of you as a father figure, because the truth is we're all doing the best that we can on the journey that we're in. And as long as we continue to raise the bar for one another in different areas, we all get stronger. I always says the chain is as strong as its weakest link. And so it's up for each piece of that chain to be strong. So I appreciate you both. And I continue to go strong into my three C's. And um, it is, it's about consistently putting in the reps. Like you're never done putting in reps. There's always reps somewhere to put in. And wherever they're at, I'm going to go put them in. Uh, th thank you, Coach. <clears throat> thank you, Clifford. Thanks for being inspiration. You want to close this out? I'll give you so, that. Same time, same channel. We're going to keep doing this. We go through each principle and we just keep growing together. That's what it comes down to. We want to live a life that was fulfilled. We want to live a life where we showed up as our best. We want to live a life that we can look back on and say, yeah, I did that. And so we're here for you to rise you up when you're down. And maybe one day we'll be down. And when we're down, you can rise us up with your stories too. Because sometimes the best coaching isn't necessarily the one always leading. Sometimes a leader can be al allowed to be led to remind the follower that they can be good leaders too. So you all take care. Have an amazing day. Greatness is in you. And keep putting in the reps.